My children, I had given this dream to your sister Lydia as another confirmation to the body of Christ concerning what is about to happen in your world. My daughter Lydia was afraid at first that this dream indicated that she would be left behind after the rapture of my bride. But my son Mark has explained that it shows not the rapture of my precious bride, but the catching away of the young ones who are not appointed to suffer the coming of the day of the Lord, my saints. My children, a number of you doubt the recent message I had given to my son Mark regarding the coming worldwide rapture of those who are below the age of accountability. While it is always good for my saints to test every prophecy by my Holy Spirit and my Holy Scriptures, I wish to point out a simple truth to you. Not every mystery in these end times has been spelled out in my Scriptures, for many are those which have been sealed up for such a time as this, for you are the generation who will see the return of your true King, the Great I Am. As I had instructed my prophet Daniel and my apostle John to see of certain mysteries regarding the end times, so it is that not all of my revelations has been disclosed in the canon of Holy Scriptures. I am same yesterday, today, and forever, for I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I have chosen to reveal the mysteries of my sovereign will and my divine plan of redemption to my chosen prophets in the days of old, and I still do so today in your generation. This is my way, children, and my way is higher than your way, as my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Have I not declared this in my holy words? Let me reveal this entire mystery to you now, my loves, so listen carefully by my Holy Spirit within you. Just as I commanded my servant Moses to take a census of the Hebrews in the time of the Exodus from Egypt, one shortly after their passing through the Red Sea, and once before a new generation of Israelites were poised to enter the promised land of Canaan. I have taken a census of all who live upon the earth in your generation. What does this mean, my loves? The taking of a census involves the numbering of those who are to be reckoned by the authorities for inclusion within their jurisdiction and rule in their lands, is it not? In the same manner, I have numbered all who are alive in this present generation for my reckoning and judgment as the day of the Lord approaches the inhabitants of the earth. I tell you the truth, not a single name of those who are above the age of accountability in this generation will escape my reckoning, for I will judge each one according to the words I have spoken by the command of my Father in heaven. These words I speak bring eternal life to those who believe me, but they will also bring God's condemnation upon the heads of the wicked and unrepentant sinners. Repent, I say again repent, for the time of my coming is at hand, for I desire none to perish and all to come to repentance through my gospel. In the accounts of the exodus of my people from Egypt, I had instructed my servant Moses to number those men who are twenty years of age and above, in order that they may be counted within the army of Israel, and for the purposes of my judgment concerning each person's faithfulness and obedience to me. Those of you who are familiar with the book of Numbers, Know that an overwhelming majority of my children, who are counted within the first national census of Israel, fail the test of their faith and obedience to my command to enter the promised land. Because the giants of fear and despair had robbed them of their confidence in me, the great I am, and had caused them to forget my powerful deliverance, as evidenced in my destruction of Pharaoh, and his chariots in the Red Sea. Therefore, 
I judged them and held them to account, for each were numbered in the census of those who were of military age. Apart from my faithful servants Joshua and Caleb, the rest of that generation were condemned to wander the desert until they died and their bodies lay in the wilderness. Who are the ones who are not held accountable to me, my loves? Those who are not numbered by my command in the first census taken of Israel, who are below the age of military service at that time. That generation was spared my righteous judgment because they were not reckoned within the military force of Israel at the first census. Yet those children were the ones who rose up as a new generation of Israel's warriors, who was subsequently numbered in the second national census of those who had attained the age of military service under the leadership of Joshua, Moses' aid. That generation went on to enter the promised land, and to take hold of my promise to them and their forefathers through faith and obedience to my command. They accomplished what their fathers failed to do, even though they themselves did not manage to destroy or drive out all the pagan inhabitants of the lands I had promised to give to Abraham and his descendants. Still they, along with Joshua and Caleb, my faithful warriors had done what the previous generation of Israelites could not. By going in my name and in my power to conquer large territories of land from the pagans there. Why am I recalling this piece of Israel's history, my loves? The reason is simple. In a similar manner, I am leaving the young ones out of my reckoning and judgment when the day of the Lord commences for they have not been included in my global census of all who have attained the age of personal accountability. These young ones are those who are not old enough to have developed sufficient moral awareness in their lives and who are not ready to exercise their individual free will in differentiating right from wrong. That is why they shall be rescued up to my Father's kingdom in heaven before the day of the Lord commences. While my faithful bride will remain to go through the climax of the earth's bad pains, bringing forth the long-awaited manifestation of the glorious sons and daughters of God, my bride will not be taken up to heaven at that time, for she must remain for a little while to work in the harvest fields of the world's peoples after the time of the great darkness ends. This is foretold in my word in the parable of the great wedding feast, is it not? My chosen saints will go forth with my gospel, which is my invitation to all unreached people of the earth at the time of the great soul harvest to attend the wedding of the Lamb as guests of my beloved bride and I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Only after the period of harvest is concluded, will the rapture of my bride and the wedding guests take place, according to my father's sovereign will and time. This is the time spoken of when my saints will be clothed in immortality, as the last shofar sounds in the heavens to herald their rapture heavenward, to where I await them and their arrival in my kingdom. Then my saints will be reunited in heaven with their little ones, who would have been rescued before the day of the Lord shall arrive. As I have already declared previously, the young ones will not suffer the commencement of the day of the Lord when the sixth sin is broken. And they will not remain on earth with their parents, siblings and relatives who will be busily preparing and working in the great soul harvest, which will begin after the three days of darkness concludes. They will be taken out of harm's way and await their loved one's arrival in heaven at the time of the bride's rapture, at the end of the harvest period. Not only so, the early departure from the perils of the earth and the coming wrath of God will open up an important opportunity to witness and preach the gospel to those who do not truly know me and my salvation for them. 
This includes the unbelievers, the lukewarm believers, and my back's leadership. All these have been ordained by God for the purpose of increasing the avenues of evangelism in your world, my loves, so that many more souls will believe that I am the one true Savior of the world. This soul harvest that must take place before the end of the church age will be the greatest in the history of my church on earth before the rapture of my bride. Indeed, the worldwide rapture of the young children will contribute to the preaching and acceptance of my one true gospel on a global scale. That is why I have declared that the glory of the latter house, my end time saints will surpass that of the former house, my apostles, and the saints of the first century church. I tell you the truth, the latter rains are falling upon you now, my bride, and will continue to do so until the time of your rapture to my heavenly kingdom. Come to me on bended knees this day, my loves, and seek my confirmation to you regarding this message. I have no wish for my children to argue among themselves, for that is not the way to test the spirit behind every prophecy you receive. Practice what I have commanded in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, and wait upon me faithfully and patiently to reveal these end-time mysteries to you, my loves. Keep on praying in the Spirit for all the saints around the world, because the day of evil comes with a vengeance. But know that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, for I have crushed the serpent's head, and he will be fully brought under the feet of my chosen saints, to the praise and glory of God, Jesus Christ, your coming King.